not going to sing unless I can get a better good afternoon than that. Good afternoon. Yeah. What a day. I, uh, many of you will not believe this in the audience because you know me too well, um, but this is, this is a bit overwhelming. It is. It's a bit overwhelming that this, uh, forgive me, Bill Burns, that this damn thing is finally done. Now, the only thing I'm going to ask is I'm not going to do what I usually do and tell you that I'll be brief and then not be brief because I'm not going to be brief because I have to name a lot of folks who have done incredible work and if I can, the only little price of indulgence I ask for is that you let me share a little bit of history and excitement about this project and give a lot of credit where it's due for a lot of folks, even knowing fully that I'll make the awful mistake of leaving some folks out, and I apologize for that. It's been such an incredible, strange trip to get to where this place is today, and so many people in, in both the private and the public sector have done so much. So if you can, bear with me and let's enjoy the day, and uh, thank God that we were given such a wonderful day, uh, because I don't know what we would have done in a rainstorm. Would we have just uh, had to wing it? Let me begin just by introducing the stage platform, if I can, because many of the folks up here have been instrumental in, in getting this done. Uh, I recognize most of you in the audience, but let me introduce myself. Mark Montigny, your state senator. Thank you. Thank you. And joining me on stage are several folks who have worked hard. I'm going to ask this first group to stand up because as I'll say in my remarks uh, uh, briefly, and I, I said I wouldn't say that, I'll say in remarks soon, that um, the key, this gift is our gift from the legislature to this city. And the key uh, has without question been the Senate President Tom Birmingham, but with a lot of support from this tenacious local delegation. So I want them to stand, and that's uh, my good friend, starting with Representative John Quinn, who represents the University in Dartmouth with me, but also Representative Rogers, Representative Cazera, Representative Strauss, Representative Rodericks, and Al Medeiros from Representative Cabral's office. Stand up and give them a round of applause. And I also know that uh, uh, Dan Bogle is here, a longtime trustee. I see Dean Lawton, the dean of the college, who has been so helpful, and uh, Provost Tom Curry, Assistant Dean Wong, the Assistant Dean of uh, the College of Visual Performing Arts. Thank you so much for your help uh, on this great project. Uh, along with Trustee Bogan, I see Trustee Giblin and Elsie Souza from our friend Bonnie Frank's office. But more important, Elsie and uh, her husband Tony have been longtime supporters of this downtown uh, redevelopment. I, I saw Mayor John Bullitt roaming around. Where are you? He's probably hiding in the shadows with Paul Downey. Where is he? That, uh, that little plug will cost you a sale this fall. <laughs> I, I did have one last fall with the distinguished mayor. Um, I want to thank you, John, um, and I also want to thank Paul Downey, who has dark sunglasses on and tried to avoid the stage. Thanks for everything, uh, Paul. I also... <laughs> we're, we're going to hear from our distinguished mayor, Fred Kalitz, momentarily, so I'll save that in the introduction, but I want to quickly mention the the same persistence, although in this day we celebrate the project completion, there's a lot of ups and downs and a lot of headaches and people like Mayor John Bullitt and Mayor Rosemary Tanney and, and most recently the great leadership of our present Mayor Fred Kalitz, it's been persistence that has paid off and that has helped having a great city council working with us also. The council president, Dennis Lawrence, is here and he is joined by councilors George Rogers, John Saunders, Jane Gonzalez, Brian Gomes, Dave Alves, Jojo Forts, the former Ward 4 councilor who worked with us at the time and the present Ward 4 councilor, Joe Andrade. If you could all stand and take a bow. And, and lastly, before I begin that unbrief speech, uh, can Kara Brown and Bill Burns and Jim Marshall and David Gorotowski 
and Catherine Hornsby and Jason Whitted from my office give us a wave, particularly you, Cara Brown. Come up and stand there. Cara, I won't speak. I'll stand here the rest of the agenda. Come on, come up. We, we, we stand here and celebrate as we should, but there are folks behind the scenes, and I feel that I have without question the hottest work in staff uh, as I tell them often and they laugh and either the private or the public sector that I've ever dealt with. Uh, shame on all those who don't realize the hard work that is put in at the miserly salary that you all receive. Cara, thank you. Um, I don't have control over that. Um, <laughs> All right, I take that back. Um, okay, okay. It, this is an awesome day for a great city, and I just want to say thank you to everyone. Uh, we, we love this place. There's tremendous memories here. I don't want to personalize it too much because every person that I've talked to today, Trustee Claire Connie, how are you? Every person I've talked to today has memories, but I think of the memories shared with me by my mother, who's here, my, my favorite gal, who is here, who shuns the spotlight and will criticize me for a week for that. But I want to thank you for, for all the uh, happy memories you shared with us. My mother worked here many, many years ago. And with great hesitation, she would drop us off with my father here, with people like John Saunders and Dave Chapman. Dave, can you give us a wave, the project manager? Where are you, Dave? I, I think of... I think of one quick story worth telling. This morning when I walked in, Terry Noel in my office said, well, I used to work at Star Store also, and I can remember that when you and Saunders and Chapman and your brother John showed up, there was a general call that went out over the intercom. They're here. <laughs> and she claims that's true, I don't know. But today, after a 15-year struggle, it's good for us to say, John Buller will relate to this, it's good for us to say, who the hell ever needed a Sheridan here anyway? <laughs> I fell for that one. Arthur Good, he's in jail now actually. He actually came down here and said to us, we're gonna build a Sheridan here. We should have said no or not, we're gonna build a university here. But it has happened, and I think uh, it has happened for many reasons, uh, not the least of which is the determination of the people on this stage. I remember walking the campus with Don Walker, the president, in the mid-80s, and he said, the key to the economic development of this region is the direct integration of this university into the community. Little did I know that we would work together so directly with the Chamber of Commerce and now with the state legislature and spend so much time to make that a reality. The Advanced Technology Center in Fall River, the Marine Science Center, and, and now this, this wonderful uh, project here in downtown New Bedford. The project uh, was a simple concept, folks. The university needed space and New Bedford needed a serious boost and we basically rejected the notion that most said, build it on the campus and save money. We basically said that our philosophy of economic development is to lift those communities that haven't been lifted by the private sector and spend resources to develop that economy. So it was worth spending a lot more money to make not only the university whole with its space needs, but to make this downtown literally, literally resurge. And I think the, the linchpin has been this campus and the commitment of this university. The obstacles were, were tremendous and I'm proud just to, in the introduction of the next guest, just to say that there were some folks that had faith. Uh, the chips were down. We fought one hurdle after another, one rejection after another, and one person stood there, ironically at the time, as Chair Ways and Means with the full support of then Senate President Bulger, but the one person who stood there through thick and thin when others said, it's not worth the money, do it on the campus, was Tom Birmingham, our president. And I'm going to bring him forward, but first I want to say that when we look back at the resurgence of, of this great community and remember things, um, we'll remember that this legislature, this delegation, with the support of this president, put this community at the top of the list. Whether it's Route 18, the ferry terminal, the aquarium, the Zyterian, this project, on and on and on. We have gone up to say, we don't just need our fair share because it's not enough. And it's worked. It's worked. The private sector is now, I think, caught on to the, uh, the wonder of this place. And in my opinion, in my opinion, this project will have not only an amazing practical economic effect, but a symbolic effect, because it's not only lifted the fortunes of downtown New Bedford, but I think it's lifted the spirit of the whole city. And I think we're on our way to something great. And I, does anyone agree with that? I, 
I want to say thank you to one more person before I bring Tom forward and make one last pledge. Ed Sylvia, can you give us a wave? Ed, Ed donated this plaque, which you, you might remember from the corner there. And I also want to thank George Leentire and Paul Downey. George went out and personally paid at an auction. Ed Sylvia retained this from when he had title to the building. And Paul Downey, who's hiding in the back row, gave it to his generosity. Thank you all very much for giving us those memories. The, the last thing that I want to pledge from this delegation, because we speak universally on this, is one of our other long-time obsessions. We will do everything in our power to deliver for you, because I think it's a key to the resurgence of this whole regional economy, and that is commuter rail. So stick with us, and that's where we're moving on to, and I thought it was worth saying that today. Let me now bring forward the special guest, the Senate President, it's no secret, he's been running around the state sharing lots of thoughts in communities, but the one thing that I think is lost at times in the criticism and the unfairness of politics is what has already been delivered and getting credit for where it's due. Uh, I'm not gonna say much more, but when he offered me the Ways and Means Chairmanship, I said it will come with a, with, a, with a hefty price. We need to do great things for this community to make it great again, and he has supported it every step of the way, and I can say that we would not have been able to get Stastor done without this person who has been awesome for New Bedford. My friend and, and mentor, Tom Birmingham, our Senate President. What a happy day. This is a win, win, win. It's a win for the University of Massachusetts. It's a win for historic preservation. And most certainly, it is a win for the city of New Bedford. I can vividly recall when a then recently elected senator on a dreary November day in, I believe, 1995, took me by that corner where it says Jets, Jet Tours, and told me about his dreams for converting the Star Store. It was then an empty, derelict building in the heart of New Bedford. And with its dereliction came the dereliction of downtown itself. And Senator Montigny did not have to connect the dots for me because we had a similar situation in my hometown of Chelsea, where the post office had been abandoned, and with its abandonment, our central square became a place that people avoided rather than wanted to go to. We converted that beautiful old post office, abandoned for a decade, into a satellite campus of the University of Massachusetts. Students are now there, bookstores are now there, coffee shops are now there, foot traffic, all times of the day and night. So when Mark explained his dream for the Star Store, I knew exactly whereof he spoke, I knew exactly how real this could be, and today we celebrate because a star is reborn. The Star Store. And since the statute of limitations has passed, Mark, Mark couldn't resist telling me of the hijinks that he was up to in the old Star Store. Had I known how he could get into other people's property, I never could have named him Chair of Ways and Means in good conscience. But he has some rather perverse memories of the Star Store. Just speaking to some of you, I, I know that collectively there are great memories that, th that this building affords the citizens of New Bedford. And, and look at this lovely building with its Rococo design. Once a building like this is gone, it is like the extinction of a species. It is gone forever. And its preservation is not an act of sentimentality. It's not an act of nostalgia. It is an act of economic development. And this star store will be an anchor. This is another piece in the mosaic of New Bedford's renaissance. And this is a true gem. So I was happy to have some small involvement with this, uh, but Mark was, was much too kind. There are many people who can legitimately take credit for pushing forward this project, but none 
deserves more praise. None deserves more credit than your state senator and our chair of Ways and Means, my friend and yours, Mark Montigny. On so many issues, he has been a zealous advocate for the interest of New Bedford and the South Coast generally. Today was just one example. We're opening the Star Store and we get a, we get a commercial for the commuter line. I mean, this guy touches everything but the third rail. <laughs> but he's given me some good ideas. I want you to invite you all up to the Chelsea Aquarium next year. <laughs> But, but he does a great job, and because of projects like this, the future of New Bedford is as bright as the sunshine today. And you are all to be congratulated. I don't know if the Boston Globe is here, or the Boston Herald, or Channel 4, or 5, or 7, but it would be good if they were here to see the true face of New Bedford, a city of decent, hard-working, family-oriented, ethnically diverse people. You deserve projects like this because you're not second-class citizens. New Bedford is on the move. You're headed in the right direction. Congratulations to you all. You have done yourselves proud, and we are all proud of you. Thank you for including me today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prez. Thanks for your help and your leadership. Uh, the Prez is right. My mother reminds me with that, with that Catholic guilt that we needed to build this project as penance for all the times we ran up the down escalator and drove the clerks crazy. You're right. Thanks, Mom. The, the next speaker, and, and also a great supporter, he was the Senate president when Tom, as chair of Ways and Means, said yes to this project, and he has been awesome for this university, awesome for UMass Dartmouth, and great for the university system as a whole. The university president, former Senate President Bill Bulger. Thank you very much. Mark Montigny. Oh, the sun does indeed shine brightly on New Bedford today. And how nice to be a small part of it. How nice to be here. And it's been remarked, but it deserves repetition. I wish that the whole world's attention were focused on what is happening this day in New Bedford. It would tell you more about New Bedford than anything else that has been publicized about this great city. I am especially happy to be reminded that I was the president of the Senate. <laughs> Little did I know. <laughs> We would put the idea in here with Montigny and Birmingham running about. I would give it a green light. It would go to the governor. It would become law. And then, lo and behold, at the other end of the tunnel when it's finally done, I'm here to receive it. <laughs> That is known as a conflict of interest. <laughs> so my name is Flynn, Ray Flynn. I came down. This is as far south as I've ever been. I don't travel very far from uh, Boston, but uh, it's such a delight to be here today and to be a, a little bit of a part of this, uh, to be with my old colleagues in government, uh, uh, Senator Montigny and uh, President Birmingham, and to be with uh, uh, all of the others, all of whom have been helpful to us. Their names have all been, uh, their presence has been acknowledged, so I won't go into the litany of names of the legislators, but I want to uh, say on behalf of uh, Chancellor McCormick and the University of Massachusetts, thank you, all of you, for the support that you've given the university, and especially with respect to uh, this enterprise. Uh, I also want to express gratitude to the governor she has supported this by her uh, signature, and we're asking that she be supportive of it again very shortly. So for heaven's sake, let us applaud the governor of Massachusetts. <laughs> or anyone else who helps us out. So I, I uh, maybe, can I just, 
Well, this is, why not? <laughs> Here we are. Montigny got up and had the nerve to say that he won't sing unless uh, everyone came up and uh, paid attention. I'll sing whether you pay attention or don't, because that's how I got elected all the time. I never like to talk issues. Show me a candidate who talks issues. <laughs> I'll show you a candidate who won't be back. So we used to have much fun in all the few years that I was in public life, and it's, so I'm back at it again. I have the microphone, and what really can anyone do about it? <laughs> Welcome to my rally. I would like to announce my own candidacy. No, no, no. No, this is, uh, this is a delight to be here. Can I just say one word? The university, the campus at Dartmouth, for the first time in its history, uh, during the past uh, year and a half, has found the way to endow two professorships. And it will soon endow a third professorship. And how has that come about? An endowment of a professorship means, of course, that we put a certain amount of money uh, aside, and the, the monies that are generated in interest uh, from, from that investment are then used to pay the professor. We bring great professors to our universities when we have uh, such a method of payment because they are not subject then to the vagaries of public finance. They like it. And it's our intention to have at least five such professorships on this campus very soon. It so happens that the legislature funded a bill a year ago for $10 million. And we call those matching funds. And the idea, very briefly, was to take those millions, $10 million, and find people who would be inspired by a portion of that $10 million to give a gift so that a professorship could be created on our various campuses. In 1996, we had two across the entire University of Massachusetts five campus system, five such professorships. Today we have 38. Last year we created 15 because all of those millions of dollars, the $10 million, were matched by another $12.5 million from private donors who made it possible to create professorships across the system, many at the medical school, which is a natural uh, object of people's uh, assistance and gratitude. But here in New Bedford and here at our campus, at the Dartmouth campus, for the very first time, we have such professorships. It helps our university. It, it attracts great, great professors to the university. It means a great deal. And we're going to have more of them. This year, it so happens that the very same legislators who have already been uh, received a, a note of gratitude I have such a bill before us, six and a half million dollars uh, to continue this effort of creating professorships. And I want to thank them because the bill is now uh, in their midst and they'll have an opportunity shortly to uh, put it on the governor's desk and she is assured of us, of our, her support. And the legislature itself recognizes that the university is trying to engage in self-help, trying to help ourselves to improve our financial uh, health. So I'm grateful to them. I wanted to give that little commercial on behalf of that piece of legislation. And uh, you have to file as a lobbyist to do such things, ordinarily, <laughs> unless you can find a forum like this and then it's free speech. So here we are in, um, with free speech uh, asserting this uh, need and I think a, a, this wonderful self-help idea for the university. I, and get a law school too. Oh, this is very democratic around here. That's right. Get re-elected. I, James Michael Curley. I will take the useless gold dome from the top of the state house, turn it upside down, place it in the middle of Andrews Square in South Boston, fill it with water, and let the little children of your community use it as a swimming pool. <laughs> Curly makes no rash promises. I sound like Mark Montigny, for God's sake. And there goes the 
There goes the appropriation. <laughs> but no, it's a joy to be here. Nice to be part of it. I want to express a word of thanks to our, a chancellor at the Dartmouth campus, Jean McCormick. She has been splendid. She, she has been a passionate advocate for every good cause in this community and as well as for the university. And a person like that, the public service, you know, we, we uh, joke about the fact that it's the public service, you should be very happy if you know you've done exactly as you should and expect no other gratitude for it. But it's wonderful on a day like this just to single out a person like Jean McCormick, like Birmingham, like the rest of our group here, Montigny and, and all of the others, George Rogers, Mike Rodericks, John Quinn, uh, Bob Cazera, Tony Cabral, Bill Strauss. Have I missed anyone? Every one of them deserves our gratitude. They give immensely to their good public purpose. And there is no expectation, really, of uh, thanks. But they deserve it. They really do deserve it. And uh, it's wonderful today to uh, have an opportunity to give them the applause and the cheerfulness that you uh, bring with you. And as for the law school, my boy, yeah. if re-elected, I promise. Thank you very much. Most of us who have served in the Senate learned a lot from uh, President Bulger. This, the first thing that he said to me when I walked in is, the one thing you don't answer is questions. <laughs> Another tidbit, though, that's probably more uh, directly related to this great day, I mentioned the woman, Terry Noel, earlier, who, who spent some time in her early life in security in the staff store. One thing I learned from Bulger, when you have a one newspaper town like this with a very, very widely read, powerful newspaper, our own Standard Times, the best thing you can do is silence the opposition. What we did is we hired Terry Noel, and she won't tell anything about those days. Welcome, Terry. The, the next speaker has been, uh, I think, introduced effectively by President Bulger, so I'll keep it brief and tell you how thankful we are in this community to have Eugene McCormick, not only for your support of this project, your, your unwavering support, but for your leadership in bringing us uh, from a point of greatness to even greater greatness, Gene McCormick. Thank you, Mark, and thank you, everyone. This is a terrific day for UMass Dartmouth and for New Bedford. Um, as the Disney song goes, when you wish upon a star, as you'll see when we cut that ribbon and go in, our dreams have come true. We could not be more excited about the opportunities that being downtown in this wonderful city present to us. For us, it's a coming home again. Those of you who grew up in New Bedford will remember the Star Store with wistful nostalgia. Some of you remember riding the escalator up and down and up and down the wrong side. Some remember the vacuum tube. I've heard that story of the, 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 the receipts and the money that went from floor to floor up and down. For the ladies in the group, you remember the opulent ladies' room with the floor to ceiling mirrors, something that our chain stores don't provide us these days. Others will remember the basement lunch counter. The food was good, the personal service was better, and the friends were best of all. It represented a precious time when a visit to a local department store was as much a social experience as it was a chance to buy something. The Star Store acknowledged customers as individuals, as neighbors, as friends and it was a bustling center of downtown activity. Bringing it to life again has required some changes. You will see something different inside when you go in. I believe when you see the new computers, the kilns, the sculpture studios, the gallery, and all the creative spaces, you will see that it retains some of the same spirit of the warmth and that touch of individuality that made it so important to the community. What better use could we have for it now than to make it a center for learning and cultural activity, two activities that truly signify 
the return of that focus on the individual and to a new era of rebirth and hopefully economic vibrancy for downtown. When we bring 500 or 600 students, Jack, downtown, they have to buy things, they have to do all kinds of things. You know, in thinking what it means to restore a building, instead of replacing it, as Senator Birmingham has said, I thought of something that Winston Churchill said in 1943. When he spoke to the House of Commons, whose historic chamber had been destroyed by one of the last bombs of the war. In arguing for its restoration rather than its replacement, he said, we shape our buildings and afterwards our buildings shape us. We have our own leaders here who've had that same vision, who wanted to recapture what had shaped them in their youth and they had a dream that this building could shape a new future for the city. And clearly without them, their courage and their tenacity and their vision, this magnificent achievement would not be possible. I, I want to thank all of them, and I have a few gifts for them, but I must single out one in particular who made the restoration of the Star Store his dream, and he would not take no for an answer, Senator Montigny. He's a he is a devoted alum of the university and a fearless champion for the city of New Bedford. And it seems like the right occasion for the university to present to him a leadership recognition award and to proclaim publicly our deep appreciation to him. So I'm going to try to embarrass him a bit, not easily done, but let me give it a try. <laughs> All right. This is a citation that's been prepared, and it reads the following. I'll let you read along here, Mark. I have to have bigger print, being slightly older than For me thing. or for you? <laughs> not for you. I work better with pictures. <laughs> there you go. It says, Mark Montigny, Senator Extraordinaire, loyal citizen of New Bedford and steadfast son of UMass Dartmouth. You have been unstoppable, prime mover, and genuine miracle worker in bringing the Star Store Building Project to glorious fruition. In so doing, you have signed your name indelibly in faith across the renaissance of, your, renaissance of your hometown and the academic flowering of your alma mater. A man of profound convictions and focused devotions, you have always felt a deep love for the city of your birth and for the university where you first discovered and explored the impressive dimensions of your leadership potential. From the start, you have considered it your mission to nurture the university's growth and excellence and to integrate the university as a primary motivational force in the region's economy. With typically acute civic and academic vision, you recognized early on that the beloved and unused Star Store building could serve as the catalyst for the rebirth of the city and the expansion of the university's sphere. Determined and dynamic, you went to work to create and father the plan to redevelop this 70,000 square feet historic building in the heart of downtown New Bedford. Your concept of the restored building as a bustling educational enterprise alive at the city's core is now realized. According to plan, it houses studios and classroom space for UMass Dartmouth College of Visual and Performing Arts, as well as classrooms and workspace for Bristol Community College. <laughs> the building will attract hundreds of students and faculty to the city each day, as well as provide New Bedford residents with better access to education in the arts. On the long, obstacle-filled road to accomplishment, your dream became an obsession. You drew so many others into sharing your dream. The city council, the mayor, 
the university, Bristol Community College, the legislature, the Division of Capital Asset Management. You understood so well the power of partnership when enabled through strong leadership. You championed and shepherded it through all the necessary steps. Throughout, your enthusiasm never weighed, your inventiveness never dried up, and your termination never met a roadblock that you couldn't overturn. To our great benefit, the word no is not one you understand. Today, the renovated Star Store building has become the linchpin of economic revitalization and private investment in New Bedford, and the sight of it sends a jolt of hope through all of us who care about this area. In gratitude for your hardworking love of your hometown and alma mater, and in recognition of the practical vision, the granite determination, and the robust leadership that turned your magnificent obsession into our magnificent reality. The University of Massachusetts Dartmouth creates, takes great joy in paying you tribute on this very special day. Now Mark made this happen by drawing others into his dream. And I certainly want to acknowledge the incredible support of Mayor Kalis and the City Council. They signed on early to this project and have done everything they could to make this work for our faculty, for our students, and for all of us. They signed the building over. They have helped us with all the practical support we need, parking and managing the disruption of this kind of a major restoration. And we would not have this wonderful facade without the generous support of the mayor and the city. Being able to make it look like the old Star Store was a great gift. And we are extremely grateful to the mayor and to the watchful and careful eye of Tony Souser and Whale who made this happen. You know, they have created an environment that will inspire our students. It shows the reverence for the past, imagination for the future, and all the excellence that must be in our work in, as the enduring values of both the university and the city. Once you had this beauty on the inside, on the outside, it had to shine through inside, and you're going to see that. We owe the mayor and the city council and so many of our regional, state, and, and, and elected officials a debt of gratitude for their strong support, which has been said already. So as a small token, and only a small token of our appreciation, Mayor Kalis, I have a jar full of star candy. <laughs> and this should remind you that looking up and seeing possibilities is something we greatly admire in you. As has already been said, Mark and Mayor Kalis and our local delegation had to convince a lot of other people in Boston that this star needed to rise in this city. The university would also like to thank President Birmingham, who has long been a champion for education in the Commonwealth. I want to thank him for seeing the power of this idea and for embracing this local vision. And I'd like to give you also a jar of stars. And as you nibble on them, you can be reminded of the great things happening in southeastern Massachusetts and why investing in us will always pay off. And Mr. President, I can up this candy ante if there's a law school in the works. Thank you, Jean. You know, in my capacity as Senate President, I get more than my fair share of honors and awards. Uh, for instance, I'm still trying to figure out what I did to be named Legislator of the Year by the North Shore Pitbull Owners Association. <laughs> but I will treasure this, and I will borrow a page from my 
once and future mentor of the president of the University of Massachusetts. And let me tell you, we both share this august title, Mr. President. And I remember once that uh, the president of the United States himself came to Boston to celebrate the decline in the crime rate. And the event was held at the University of Massachusetts at Boston, the president of which, of course, is William Bulger. And as it happened, um, Bill Clinton, William Bulger, and I got into a tri-cornered conversation, and somebody called out, Mr. President, and all three of us turned around. <laughs> it was an exceedingly humbling experience for me, <laughs> but even more so for Bill Clinton. <laughs> I'll borrow a page with regard to the reference to the law school. I'll borrow a page from, from the book of, of William Bulger, because if you took a stenographic record of anything he said, he never commits to anything, actually. <laughs> and, and in response to your entreaty, Gene, I would say, if re-elected, I promise. <laughs> want to acknowledge someone that Mark has acknowledged, Paul Downey. Paul stepped to the plate in entering into this public-private partnership with the university and the Division of Capital Asset Management and made this project come alive much more quickly and with real professionalism and a spirit of genuine cooperation and collaboration. We are very deeply grateful to him. Commissioner David Carini and so many people from the Division of Capital Asset Management, especially John McMillan and Dick Lawson, who are with us every step of the way, contributing their construction knowledge and their expertise and managing the project effectively. They were the most valuable players in this historic project, and we are very grateful for all of they did, including letting us access some funds that we had in an old authorization for new furniture and equipment. You will not believe what you see. I am so happy that for our faculty and students who have been at Purchase Street, if you've been inside it, this is like a breath of fresh air. Um, and I want to, through the commissioner, also express my gratitude to, to Governor Swift. Um, she has given her ongoing support to this project, and we know that that will continue. Suffolk Construction also did a terrific job and was wonderfully flexible. This is not an easy building to build. When you go in and you see all of the things that go on in art studios, they were just so wonderful in helping us make very complicated systems work and allowing us to change uh, in the course of the construction, the first floor of the building, which we wanted to make into a great public space so that it can be used by the community in so many ways. I think you'll see that they helped us do that and it makes a big difference. Before the first wall was torn down and added back up, we needed a full programmatic plan for what we would do in the building and to make it possible for us and for BCC to live there and to do the programs that are important to us. Creating the plan for this state-of-the-art learning facility, we had several key players, and it's very important for me to acknowledge them. Dean John Lawton, who is the Dean of the College of Visual and Performing Arts, who has been a dynamic force in helping us to shape what you'll see inside. His assistant dean, Janine Wong, a faculty member whose eye for color and design and fabric is making the aesthetic that you see inside. Mark Carney, who was the liaison between our facilities department and all of the contractors. Mark has been our guy on site, and he's the one who has the practical good sense to solve problems that get complicated. And I know our Vice Chancellor for Administration and Finance, Bill Heaney, and our Facility Director, Lee Nason, played an important role as well. Moving from Purchase Street has been an experience. Almost everything we had at Purchase Street didn't want to move. When we unattached it from the floor, it just died. Um, so I want Eric Lintala, who's a faculty member in our sculpture department from CVBA, who did all of the work to coordinate the move. He used a number of our students who took equipment apart, put it back together, and who opened all of the new equipment and assembled it. I also want to acknowledge Rick Creighton, who's a faculty member who assisted, Barbara Lynch, 
Paula Ehrenberg, and graduate students Kevin Freschetti and Priscilla Andrews. They worked with a wonderful group of students from UMass. And even though they were all anxious to get here, what it meant for our faculty for the artistry and, and fine arts programs was a lot of extra work this summer. Um, they really put their heart into making sure that we were ready for this opening. Thank you for being part of this. And finally, that I would like to say that we are really looking forward to sharing this facility with BCC. We have been partners in the region in education for a long time, but President Sprager and I share the view that we can create in New Bedford a seamless web of educational opportunities for the people of New Bedford, and we are very excited about having the chance to do this together. You know, the Star Store is a building that shaped New Bedford in the past. This new UMass BCC star can shape the future and make many individual wishes and dreams come true. It's indeed a symbol of real hope, both for the university and for New Bedford, and I am so thrilled to be part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Gene. Our next speaker and our partner in this is Dr. Sprager from Bristol Community College. Not part of the original plan, but an exciting addition over the years, and I think this place will be uh, uh, even greater because of the presence of BCC. Thank you, Doctor, for all your support. Thank you very much, and uh, what a wonderful day. I don't want to take much more time uh, of your valuable time, but I did want to say that uh, Bristol Community College is honored to be a a full partner in this project and uh, we look forward to some great things. I too want to thank uh, President Birmingham, uh, Senator Montigny, all the legislators who have uh, helped us in this uh, project, uh, President Bolger at one end of the tunnel and President Bolger at the other end of the tunnel. Uh, I really want to point out, President, uh, uh, all the people I've just mentioned, their vision uh, uh, coincides with mine about the continuum of education and the need for these partnerships. And no one has been more supportive than Chancellor McCormick. I, I've thoroughly enjoyed, uh, I've only been here one year now, and I've thoroughly enjoyed every contact I've had with Chancellor McCormick. She's determined to make this project work, and I assure you that it will. I want to also recognize uh, some of our board of trustees from the Bristol Community College, uh, Sister Kathleen Harrington, uh, Robert Bogan, uh, Carl Cruz are, are here, and I thank them for coming and their support uh, for the Bristol Community College uh, part of this project. Um, I want to say that uh, also we, we uh, in case you don't know, we started classes yesterday. We have 416 uh, students registered at Bristol Community College in this building. And yesterday, the first day of operation, uh, we had the Greater New Bedford uh, Community Healthcare, a, a business, begin training for its employees uh, here at this college. And, uh, uh, we look forward to workforce development and uh, all the other great things that Bristol Community College will perform here at this site. I also want to make special mention of our outstanding leadership in the presidency of uh, Eileen Farley, without whom the Bristol Community College would not be a part of this project. Thank you, President Farley. Mayor Kalis and the City Council and the staff, everyone has acknowledged the great help and uh, we, we, we will be continuing to seek uh, uh, support uh, as we build and expand upon this project. Uh, someone mentioned earlier, Chancellor McCormick mentioned Winston Churchill, one of my heroes in, in this life, and I would also like to borrow a sentiment from him. This project with the ribbon cutting is not uh, the end. It does not bring us to fruition. It is not even uh, uh, the beginning uh, uh, of the end. It is really just part of a project that I pledge to you that Bristol Community College will make succeed. Mayor Kalis and the legislators and everyone, and no, no one more than Senator Montigny, wants to see the uh, revitalization of downtown New Bedford. And I guarantee you that this project will make that happen. 
It has been my fortune to be at community colleges uh, for over 25 years and at two other sites in downtown Richmond, Virginia and in downtown Providence, Rhode Island. Community college campuses have played an instrumental role in the revitalization of the downtown area. And I know and I'm very confident that that will happen here in New Bedford as well. Uh, Chancellor McCormick uh, talks about a seamless path and that is why we're here. Uh, there, it is a partnership uh, and Bristol Community College will provide many of the services that will then feed into UMass Dartmouth and, and we all benefit. We will do the workforce training that Mayor Kalis and all the legislators want to have happen here and I pledge to you that that will occur. It will happen. This is, be, this is going to be a wonderful project and we have those 416 students that are already on board and we're going to have many, many more and I can guarantee also to the mayor and the city council and all the legislators that your offices will be flooded, absolutely flooded with comments from grateful students who prospered uh, because of this uh, project. Uh, community colleges are there to serve the, stu the students, to serve the community. We're part of the community. We're not just in this city, we're of the city. And we, I want to absolutely assure you of that. President Birmingham and President Bulger and Chancellor McCormick in the world of education know that there are many obstacles about seamless paths for students, but, there, but we will make that happen, and this is a living example of uh, this beautiful building. So I thank you very much for coming. I, I look forward to a, uh, not, not even the end of this beginning of this project, but to much greater things that will happen in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doctor. The, uh the MC has failed, and I apologize. We planned a ribbon cutting at one. We're a bit late. A few more minutes, I promise. Thank you for mentioning President Farley, Doctor, who uh, also would not take no for an answer. The thank you. Then, before I introduce the next speaker, I hope you all will carry the message to. Uh, Donald got at the head of the Redevelopment Authority at the time who was so supportive of this project. He started a process uh, and the staff at City Hall, led by Mayor Kalitz and this city council, many of whom are here, have been tremendous supporters in this. And I'd like to ask our mayor to come forward and share his thoughts on this project. Mayor Kalitz, thanks for your help. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to begin by obviously doing something that so many of the previous speakers have done, and that's to thank Senator Mark Montigny for being the leading force behind the Star Store development. Without his tireless efforts, this project, Senator, would not have become a reality. I would also like to thank UMass President William Bulger and UMass Dartmouth Chancellor Gene McCormick for their hard work and their commitment to this project so it again becomes a reality. Ladies and gentlemen, what you see here today is the result of an awful lot of hard work by countless individuals, to Governor Jane Swift, to Senate President Tom Birmingham, to Representatives Cabral, Cazera, Rogers, Quinn, and Strauss, to the members of the City Council in New Bedford who worked with me on this development, to Commissioner Perini, and to Bristol Community College President John Sprague, I would like to thank you all for believing in New Bedford. Mark made some very important acknowledgments at the outset, thanking his staff. I would like to extend a public gratitude to that personal advisor I have, the intellectual genius that puts the legal aspects together for our administration, George Leontire. Because when I was asked how it could be done, I turned to George and he knew how we could do this so that the city could benefit as well as the university. Thank you, George. <laughs> Finally, I'd like to thank the citizens of New Bedford whose contribution, the building, and for the tax incremental financing was critical a critical component in making the Star Store project possible. As everyone looks up at this beautiful building today, remember that it was $550,000 of city money pledged by my administration to restore the facade of Star Store, making it the grand building we all remembered and that we can see today. 
Without that pledge, this building would look like any other building in a suburban mall. And it would be a doubtful that the approval of the various agencies that were involved with historic reservation would have allowed it to have happened, which would have significantly hindered this project. I am also pleased to report to you today that the city of New Bedford is renovating the building's original iron awning and it will be reinstalled when the work is completed. <laughs> Mr. President, Chancellor, Senator, Legislative Delegation, our City Council and everyone gathered here today, the people of New Bedford should take pride in knowing that they had a substantial hand in not only bringing this much anticipated project to a conclusion, but also continuing to spur the rebirth of downtown New Bedford. Thank you very, very much. The last speaker on the agenda, the Commissioner of DCAM, Commissioner Perini, thank you for your help. Uh, Dave Chapman and others tell me that your staff has been excellent and you have been so personally involved. Thank you, and I'd ask you to come forward on behalf of the administration and join us. Commissioner. Thank you, Senator Montigny, and thank you for making this uh, beautiful restoration and preservation uh, project possible sort of nostalgic for me in a way because the company for which I proudly worked for 40 years, Perini Corporation, did a preservation project of its own in uh, New Bedford Harbor quite a few years ago when it built the hurricane barrier. So I think we're all making our, uh, our effort here for New Bedford. Many people have been thanked, and I want to thank them again. I, I'm, I have the feeling that uh, most of the people in the audience, particularly in the sun, didn't wear their SP4030 or whatever it is we, we put on or, and are anxious to get in, inside and get some water or something. But, but I, do want to, I do want to acknowledge that I'm, I am here on behalf of Governor Swift to celebrate the uh, reopening of this magnificent uh, building. The governor has asked me to extend uh, to you all here today her congratulations, and also to congratulate the UMass Dartmouth and the Bristol Community College and all the communities, the many communities they serve, and particularly the great city of New Bedford on this wonderful old and new addition to the downtown. I will skip what I had to say. You'll remember me for my brevity. <laughs> But I do want to thank a few people who haven't been uh, thanked uh, yet. Many people have. Uh, this project is a product of a most effective partnership between the Commonwealth and a private development team led by Paul Down Downey, the team's architect, Whitney Atwood, Norcross, and the general contractor, Suffolk Construction, worked superbly with us and UMass uh, Dartmouth and Bristol Community College to get this job done on time, which is quite an accomplishment. I'd like to recognize a few individuals from DCAM who assisted UMass in Bristol. Martha Goldsmith, our Director of Leasing, and Gilles Quintal, Senior Project Manager of Leasing. They were very instrumental in many facets of this quite entrepreneurial project, including structuring the RFP and a lease agreement that would allow the project to go forward. I'd also like to thank former DCAM Acting Commissioner Steve Hines, who's my predecessor, who played a large role in getting this project off the ground. From our construction office, I'd like to thank Deputy Commissioner Mike McKimmy, along with Mike Lambert, Mike Williams, John McMillan, and Dick Larson, for assisting and monitoring the design and construction under the restoration effort. Finally, I'd like to thank everybody for making this celebration possible. This is truly a fabulous project. I've, in my career and in my, in my uh, time with Perini, I've seen many of these, but I've seen few that have been so important uh, to, the, to a community as the restoration of uh, this building. It's a privilege to be here today on behalf of Governor Swift to help celebrate this great success with you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner.
We are done. So celebrate, celebrate this. Don't now, come on, be patient. <laughs> celebrate this precious gift. Join us. We're going to cut the ribbon now. The speakers will join me for the ribbon cutting. Two, three, cut.